So I heard this story once about Charles Chaplin supposedly calling Mexican actor Cantinflas one of the best comedians alive, even though he couldn't understand what he was saying in his movies. So whether, whether this is rooted in reality or, or just popular myth, I've always liked the story and, and what it implies. Having seen Cantinflas' movie myself, um, I can tell you that there's no way the British actor could have possibly understood what tangled American slang Cantinflas used in the movie. Uh, but I can also tell you it's perfectly possible that Chaplin did laugh at the comedian's performance, which is brought to life by his body as much as by his mouth. I also recall a scene from the movie The King's Speech when, when King George VI and his daughter are watching a clip of Hitler speaking. I'm gonna die with this I don't know, but he seems to be saying it rather well. That's, that's an amazing example, even though it's Hitler. But So both examples disclose the amazing power of public speaking. It transcends language and therefore the little meaning of words put together. A great public speaker has a way of connecting with its audience that goes beyond good grammar and logical train of thought. The, the intonation of voice, the, the rhythm and pauses, the body language are as much a vehicle to convey beliefs or ideas as the words themselves. It is a rare talent to be born with. In fact, it's, it's, it's actually quite the opposite. As, as many great skills, it mostly depends on time, opportunity, and, and practice to attain them. So here's my personal selection of amazing speakers I admire. Some of them have passed away now, some of them are alive and young, some of them are not even real people, but fictional characters who have taught me something about an incredible performance. I hope that they will inspire you as much as they have inspired me. So Hans Rosling is a Swedish medical doctor, academic, statistician, and public speaker. Few people have the ability Rosling has to explain complex sets of data in the simplest way. What amazes me about Hans, other than the fact that he's absolutely brilliant, is that he's so genuinely amazed by what he has to share with his audience as if every chance he gets to speak in front of somebody is a unique opportunity to change something in them. Most of his conferences are in English, which, which is actually not his native language. It has a strong accent that makes every syllable sound like a drum, but that doesn't diminish by an inch his ability to explain himself. He is also one of the best examples of the importance of sharing valuable content in order to engage with your audience. Most countries, girls today go to school as long as boys, more or less. Uh, that doesn't mean that gender equity is achieved, not at all. They still, still are confronted to terrible, terrible limitations. But schooling is there in the world today. Now, we miss the majority. When you answer, you answer according to the worst places. And there you are right, but you miss the majority. The, the British actress, who is now a UN Women's Goodwill Ambassador, gave a powerful speech last year on, on gender inequality. She speaks unapologetically about the stigma around the word feminism. She speaks intelligently and humbly at the same time. I think the reason why her speech is so good is she talks from her own perspective, therefore making it a, a more personal cause. It's easy to relate to her because she's not making any elaborate abstract rhetoric. She's, she's talking about a problem that affects her and what she thinks can be done to deal with it. She acknowledges that she is nervous, once again, empathy. And at some point, close to the end, she makes a good joke about herself with a stroke of genius, in my opinion. You might be thinking, who is this Harry Potter girl? <laughs> and what is she doing speaking at the UN? And it's a really good question. I've been asking myself the same thing. All I know is that I care about this problem and I want to make it better. One of the most beloved American presidents of all time, JFK, is also known to have been one of the best public speakers to ever govern the country. As part of his political career, Kennedy gave a significant amount of public speeches, thus becoming a prominent orator. Here's one in particular that, most, that is most appealing to me. We chose to go to the moon. Um, regardless of any political views, and despite the fact that the premise of reaching the moon was inspiring enough by itself, the speech is exciting, inviting, and incredibly well constructed. At one point, Kennedy uses a brilliant resource to explain how accelerated humankind has progressed over the last decades by condensing 50,000 years of man's recorded history in the time span of 50 years. But condense, if you will, the 50,000 years of man's recorded history in a time span of about a half a century. Only last week did we develop penicillin and television and nuclear power. And now, if America's new spacecraft succeeds in reaching Venus, we will have literally reached the stars 
before midnight tonight. How beautiful of a metaphor is that? Not only is it used to embellish his speech, but it actually serves the purpose of making something hard to grasp accessible. So, so Maya Angelou was an American author, poet, actress, singer, and basically one of the most epic women ever. Her, her acting training and her ease of writing gave her a significant advantage when she spoke, of course. She had a slow, serene pace, a deep voice that lingered in your head. She talked slowly, pausing after each phrase. You can shoot me with your words, you can cut me with your lies, you can kill me with your hatefulness, but just like life, all right. As if to let people digest every word she has to say. You can't talk about great public speakers without mentioning Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The humanitarian leader in the African-American civil rights movement was one of the best orators of our time. His memorable speeches had an unparalleled might in both content and delivery, and they made him one of the America's greatest intellectual leaders. While many of his public appearances went down in history, I Have a Dream is without a question his piece of resistance. I think there were key elements that made it so. The repeated use of the phrase, I have a dream, was crucial in order for people to remember the idea. His preaching style, taken from the practice as a Baptist minister, and suitable for this audience that day. The iconic scenario provided by the Lincoln Memorial, and of course, the overwhelming promise of his speech that rises to the end of like a flag of victory. When this happens, and when we allow freedom ring, when we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. So in, in 2014, American actress Ellen Page publicly recognized being gay during her speech at the Time of Thrive conference. But her speech was moving not just because of the fact of coming out, but because of the way she built up to acknowledging it during the first half of the speech. And the way she talked about her own struggle afterwards. Her voice is shaky and her body as well. And that makes you think, damn, not even a beautiful, talented celebrity has it easy coming out. But at the same time, she looks empowered by the overwhelming support she gets the minute she says the words, I am gay. Because loving other people starts with loving ourselves and accepting ourselves. And I know many of you have struggled with this. And I draw upon your strength and your support in ways that you will never know. And I am here today because I am gay. And because... <laughs> Her speech is very personal and honest, and her vulnerability is the ultimate strength. You're an orphan, right? Do you think I'd know the first thing about how hard your life has been, how you feel, who you are? Because I read all of the twist. Does that encapsulate you? Personally, I don't give a shit about all that, because you know what? I can't learn anything from you. I can't read in some fucking book. Unless you want to talk about you, who you are. And I'm fascinated. I'm in. But you don't want to do that, do you, sport? You're terrified of what you might say. I, I chose the scene for selfish reasons. The first is I love the movie. The second is that this scene is a turning point in the relationship of the two characters, thanks to the profound speech Robin Williams delivers so authentically. The third reason is this is not the ordinary, easy word pep talk that you see in the thousands. This message is tailored to the listener, and that's why it's so touching. A great speech doesn't require a huge auditorium or a massive social cost behind it. Two people sitting in a park bench will do. Summarizing, here are a few of the simple takeaways you can take from these prodigious speakers next time you need to speak in public. Know your audience and tailor your message to that specific audience. 
The use of pauses is critical. They let your message sink in. Use them. And an aphora can be a powerful resource to be remembered. Avoid posing and try not to sound like something other than yourself. Being legit works best every single time. I once read something that went like this. If someone enters a room at the end of your speech and asks, what is this about? Someone else should be able to answer in one single sentence. Even when it sounds obvious, a speech or a presentation has to be about something, and that something should be clear. All right, thanks for watching. Is lunch we'll here. See you next week.